Okay. All right, so um, I'll take a few minutes today to hit a few topics. We'll be talking about uh, technical transparency um, for Pathfinder. I'll be focusing today mostly on Pathfinder. Um, some developments that we've made in open sourcing our VNV files and the automation process that we use to uh, generate our VNV documentation uh, for Pathfinder. And then finally, some new data processing utilities that are built into the results viewer. And um, I'll highlight just for a minute um, the uh, debug mode that we have in Pathfinder and how you can kind of look under the hood and see some of the values for things that are calculated uh, during runtime. So the first part here with technical transparency, I'll just start with our homepage on our website. And if you click the products button and that drops down, you'll see a few links here for each product. There's documentation, tutorials, download and release notes, and just a note that the latest download link takes you to the most recent release note so that you can download from the release notes. So it's always, we provide the downloads where, um, where you can read exactly what changed since the last release and get yourself up to speed before you download that. Um, the other two points here, the documentation and tutorials, we've separated that out a little bit. Documentation are gonna be all of the kind of classic manuals like the user manual, the technical reference, the VNV, uh, some utility documentation, scripting library, things like that. Um, and then the tutorials, we have more like a kind of hands-on step-by-step walkthrough to do different things in the software. Um, and the, those are even sort of broken down into more like an application of the tool, like let's say subway evacuation, where the tool is being applied to some specific problem. And then we have like feature demos or feature tutorials, which really just exercise a particular capability um, of the software. So once you've clicked through to uh, download, let's say, or to the latest release, um, you'll see a, a page like this on the left. I've highlighted a couple of sections. The first one I wanted to point out is that um, next to the download link, you, there's a little pull down there, and you have two options. You have the MSI, which is a classic Windows installer that sets up all the libraries, installs everything with file associations and all of that into your computer. But there's also a zip option and this will let you download an archive that you can extract to your computer and then just run the software directly from the folder. Uh, in this case, you don't have to install to the system. Um, there may be, I mean, I'm not saying go around your IT department or anything, but um, there may be a time where you want maybe the test the latest version before you download and install and overwrite something. So this makes it really easy to just download that, test it. We do this a lot for internal testing. For our nightly builds, we'll pull the latest zip, extract it, just run it out of, the, out of that folder instead of overriding our installation every time we want to test a new version. So it's a great way to test out Pathfinder. Below that, you'll see a section where we, we typically document the changes since the last release. So it makes it really easy to go, what's new since the previous one? You can always go back up um, to the next release. If you look up here at the top, I've highlighted a couple of sections. There's a pull down list on the left um, where you'll get a list of all the previous releases, and if you click on one of those, it'll take you to the release note for that. So you could always kind of go back in time and just check previous releases and see how the software evolved over time. And then to the right of that is the documentation pull down, and that's where you'll get a list of all the different manuals and documentation that's available. Um, over to the far right, there's tutorials, frequently asked questions, and some tools available for the product. Um, I'm pointing out this to start because this is relatively new changes to the website of just how do you get to the information and where it's located. Um, so keep an eye on that. Now, once you go into something like the technical reference manual, this is where I wanted to focus on this transparency issue. Um, you know, Py Pyrosim, Pathfinder, Ventus, they're not what we would consider like an open source tool. We don't put the source code online or anything like that. But we do want, through our technical documentation, to expose all the numerical methods and, and the functionality of the tool so that what, whatever programming language you choose to implement these algorithms in, um, you could potentially you know, follow along and figure out exactly sort of what we're doing behind the scenes. So we make this not a black box. You know, we want to expose all of that information for you. And that's part of it. There's quite a bit of effort in this, um, documenting well the technical aspects of Pathfinder so that you can understand what it's doing and why. And you might even notice something like you scroll down a bit, Here's a little bit about evaluating movement, where it's computing costs for the direction of travel and the algorithm, the method that's being used there to sum all those costs and figure out which one to move in. And um, you'll see a lot of these variables and these um, 
you know, functions or equations defined in the technical reference. Uh, you can think of that as all the numerical methods. And then um, behind the scenes in Pathfinder, you, what you'll be able to do, this might be a little too small for, um, for this, I do zoom in a little bit, but in the simulation menu, there's a debug simulation option. And if you click that, it actually runs the simulation, but it'll open up a debug viewer, and I'll pull that into, into view here in a second, where um, to the left you see the model, the representation of the simulation graphically, and to the right are tabs full of tables of variables and the value associated with those. And so there's a lot of these, there's like the um, occupant data, um, locally quickest about which door that the um, agent is choosing based on lowest cost to move to. Um, there's, there's just a lot of, of information here and it, and it will show you it during runtime. So it sort of stops and starts in a paused state and then you can either step through the simulation one time step at a time evaluating the changes to various properties um, or you can actually change the um, kind of a delay value. So you can say, okay, I wanna put a 100 millisecond delay between each time step and now just slowly calculate through and watch everything change over time. And that's what you're seeing here. So I've delayed the simulation down um, and we're actually able to look at a specific agent, the seat curve that they're trying to follow in green, their destination at the end there, each vector or each direction of movement that they are choosing to uh, compute a cost against in front of them. If they go to, a, I would say, like an idle state or a wait state where they're waiting for, to be able to move, they might test vectors behind them and in front of them to be able to move laterally or, or reverse direction a little bit. But once they start forward movement again and they're moving, they're seeking, those front, frontward facing vectors turn on again. And you'll actually see one of the vectors be highlighted like in a darker color, a little arrow, which is the current direction of travel for that agent. So, what I'm just showing here is that, you know, for any of these individuals, you can click on them, highlight them, and then get the data for that specific occupant um, and what's happening. So here you see those front, it's kind of toggling between the wait state, uh, idle state, and then the seeking state, and that's happening um, for each agent all over time. So there's quite a bit more in here, and there's more information available for that, but um, if you ever wonder, like, okay, you, you talk about in the technical reference where the you know, all these costs are calculated, where can I actually see the calculated value? And why did they go that way at that time? You know, why did they choose a specific direction over another one? You'd be able to investigate that through uh, debug mode. Um, <clears throat> let's see, and I think in this case, we're just showing some costs and maximum speeds for each direction. So anyway, I, I recommend that if you use Pathfinder, explore this debug mode and take a look in there. And if you ever have any questions about what's in there and what is a particular value or anything, feel free to reach out um, for, to us for support. Um, moving forward in the future, this is not all available yet, um, but we're working on an open source, open sourcing all of our VNV files, our model files, the scripts, the automation scripts and everything um, that provide the information, the graphs and the plots and everything that you see in the verification and validation document. So this is another documentation option that you have on the website. You can pull that down and find VNV there. And we go through a bunch of different kinds of tests, show the data for the test, and what you'll see is something, you know, as you scroll down the document, you'll see something like this, where we're showing, you know, some anticipated, maybe an input curve or some expected value analytically, and then some, you know, array of points of data of all the different um, results from Pathfinder simulations as part of that uh, validation or verification case. And then almost always at the bottom of a section, you'll have some kind of an analysis section, which is where we sort of, given all that you've seen above, how do we feel about that? Do we feel like it meets you know, our criteria of success or not? Why not? Um, and most of the time, um, we'll put, we'll put um, you know, most of these we're happy with it, <laughs> you know, but there, there might be room for improvement that we'll note in here. Or even in some cases, like, you know, we may note that you know, as you go towards higher density in this case, we sort of fall off earlier than the fundamental diagram and maybe why that is uh, might be covered here in that section. So um, this I think is a pretty important um, bit of information for users, you should be familiar with this and look at the different kind of characteristics of the model that's, um, that's important for your use case and see if we have some tests or something that might uh, validate uh, that fun um, characteristic of the model.
Um, newer, a newer feature or capability here is um, built into our results viewer. So Pathfinder and Pyrosim come with a results viewer. Um, this lets you visualize FDS data along with Pathfinder simulation results all in one viewer. Again, with your CAD model and everything else, so it's a pretty nice graphical tool. Um, you can already do uh, two-dimensional plotting. We have like a plotting utility that you can do 2D plots of like your CSV data looking at heat release rate over time or something like this. Um, new to this is now a uh, scripting engine where you can write Python scripts um, and open those scripts as like an option in the navigation tree or in the object tree and then execute those scripts from there and byproducts of that execution like a plot or a graph or something will um, show up in the results viewer. So you can just open up those plots. So um, the nice thing about this, the, the, um, when it's like finally released, there'll be a, a pip module available on PyPy, which is the pack, Python package index. So you'll be able to um, include that module in your own scripts and then be able to use this for processing. We, we have built our own um, Pathfinder data tooling so you can get bits of information out of the Pathfinder results um, for data processing. And we also use, um, from University of uh, ULIC, they have um, an FDS reader Python module, which another, uh, we have another presenter that's gonna talk about that uh, during FEMTC. But we include that module for reading the FDS data as well and being able to pull that stuff in as Python objects that then you can do your data processing and analysis on. Um, this will all be made available through, like I said, PyPy and as a standard module with some documentation that will go with that. As an example here, um, this is the verification validation case for door flow rates. Um, and so what you'll see is this user script section. You can load a user script. You'll have a little maybe scripts file. Go find your Python file. It's now available, run the script, and it executes the script. And now when you double click it, now you have a plot asset that you can then um, explore, it's, it's interactive, so you can mouse over data points, you can zoom in on a section and look at some information um, up close, and then there's ways to save those plots out as images, PNGs or SVGs, um, or in, in the case of like our website, um, little HTML objects that will be embedded where you can explore some of the data in our VNV, well, web-based version of our VNV guide. So as part of that open source process here for, for Opening this up, we should have the VNV model repository available by the end of the year um, in December. There's, we're just making sure everything's cleaned up, well documented, and ready. You know, it's been an internal asset for us doing our own work internally and publishing the VNV guide. But to make it public, we want to make sure it's all legible and everything's well well labeled and documented. Um, and then uh, you'll be able to. We will be using this new system to run our VNV updating our documentation. So the same tooling and scripts and everything that we use to update, you'll be able to just execute yourself and just verify that you get the same answers and that everything's up and up on that. And in addition, you know, this, this module and this utility that we provide, um, it can be a lot, uh, useful for even more complex scenarios, you know, not just our VNV, but any you know, use case where you're doing multiple runs and, and more complex analysis of data and you might need you know, to, to massage the data in certain ways or extract it out and uh, you can use Python as a scripting language to write those data processing utilities using things like NumPy or Pandas or whatever else you need um, to do that analysis for you, built right into the results viewer so you can keep all that organized and get the information uh, that you need from that. Um, they would also be able to be used standalone too, so it's not required that you use the results viewer, you can use the module independently. And the nice part about using it in the results viewer is the results viewer can provide additional context that the module can use for some of the data processing and extraction. So it's a pretty nice value add to use it within the results view. Um, and I think with that, I'm at the end of the talk and almost at the end of my 15 minutes. So I think I'll stop there and see if there are any questions. Thank you. Oh, I, I will add, since I planned to say this earlier and I was looking for Noah, uh, Noah Hastings in the back here with the black shirt with his hand in the air is the primary developer of these Python libraries. And so if you have questions about how they work or, you know, complaints, that's the guy to talk to. You'll, you'll get him on email if you send a message to support. I would say Noah is also probably your first contact with technical support now. He's in Florida, so he definitely has a time advantage on me over in Seattle, but also uh, 
great, great kind of first response and getting all that information to you very, very quickly um, if you ever email support. So um, with that, let's see, questions about any of it before we get going? Yep, Kevin. Oh, <laughs> you have the microphone. For, yeah. yep, where was the question? Yeah, Kevin. Okay. I'm just curious now that you are developing these Python scripts, to what extent would you want to include within the within your tools the ability to do further analysis with the output from say FDS? Because so often we get people writing to us and say, gee, it would be great if we could do X, Y, and Z. And I'm thinking, hmm, this would be a good thing for <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this would I mean, be a good thing for Thunderhead to yeah, do. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, I mean, I, I kind of passed over it a little bit there, but um, we because we're using the FDS reader module that does access all the all of the FDS output data in the same scripting tool, you can you know do whatever you need with FDS output and Pathfinder output. Okay. Or even together, put them together in the same results if you need to. So, okay. yeah, I think I think it's going to open the door. I mean, FDS reader is already out there, so there already is some tooling to help yes. do yes. that. But including it all and making it easy to make plots and do that kind of all built into a results viewer is, I think, will make it more accessible to people who are yeah, using it. Yeah, yeah, I think that will be a, a big plus for people. Yeah, we hope so. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. All right. Well, good. Well, thank you very much, and I hope you continue to enjoy the conference. <laughs>